Hi, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and today I wanted to talk about New Year, New You. I know, it's such a cliche term, a lot of people say it all the time, but it's probably not what you're thinking. So, <laughs> today I was going through, and on Instagram, I, <laughs> I guess I could say Instagram or YouTube, I don't know how it works, but <laughs> I don't think that's one of those words. Anyways, so... <laughs> As I'm on Instagram, I and when I'm on Instagram, my page is full of like pastors or like things that help with money and finances. So I don't usually have like it where I'm following a person that is just doing something. I mean, like if I if I am friends with someone who is doing something on Instagram, it's usually or following someone on Instagram who is doing something. It's usually they have a business that is similar to what I do kind of like they do something a little different their business might be a little different we might not be doing the exact same thing but we're both entrepreneurs and so me following that person's page could give me other business ideas or it could be someone that I might possibly want to work with in the future so I would be friends with someone like that and then I just have a bunch of pastors or churches and I have like different groups like a uh, women evolve or something like that is on there I don't know if it's called Women Evolve or Women are fit of Faith. It's something like that. And then it's the um the shame the same room is on there. I was gonna say the shame shame something, but I don't know. It's called the the same room and it's with uh Stephanie Ike is usually on there. Someone else, another pastor is on there and they kinda do like a little blurb or something of whatever the sermon was about. And so as I'm on Instagram, I'm going through and, you know, they're talking about New Year's resolution and they're talking about, you know, it being January and things like that. And I think when this video comes out, it still should be January because it's only a couple of weeks ahead or something like that. But if it is in February, it's February. And but still people, people at this point have failed at their New Year's resolutions. They've they've done all the wrong things. They've made several mistakes and they just want to give up. But do not give up on yourself like you even just trying is good enough. Just keep moving forward. Don't give up on yourself. Please don't feel like you failed just because you didn't do something one day. Don't feel like you failed, even if you have failed. Let's say you said, I'm going to get straight A's and you failed one test. You're going to have to work harder. That's all it's telling you. If you planned on making a certain amount in your business and you didn't in January, then set another goal for February and all the mistakes that you've made, anything that you've done wrong, any way to grow your business, learn it so that the next month you can su succeed at your New Year's resolution. You don't have to look at everything as a failure just because you didn't hit the mark this month or this day or you went one day without exercising. That does not give you an excuse to just give up on setting a new regimen to work out every day or work out the majority of the time or something like that like if you, if you want to be someone who takes care of your body and you miss a day do not beat yourself up also don't make it a habit because what we like to do is say oh I missed one day of exercising and then the next, the next thing you know it's been like three days or a week and you're like oh my goodness now it's going to take forever for it you know what just start today it might take forever if you keep on waiting because it's not going to happen just by a thought you have to put some action behind it so if you really want to lose the weight, if you really want to exercise more often, if you really want to take care of your body, if you really want to take care of your health, you're going to have to be intentional about it. You can't just expect someone to come in your life like a magician and then just all of a sudden poof, you know, you're just the size that you want to be. It doesn't work like that. You really have to do something to be able to lose that weight. And I suggest doing whatever it is in the healthiest way possible. Definitely check with your doctor. Don't just change your diet if you got or, or if you're on medication or if you have some kind of health condition because you don't want to mess up something and then it end up hindering you instead of helping you. And also, you got to believe in yourself. This might be the time where you feel like, oh my gosh, you know, everything I do just seems like it doesn't work out. I thought that I had this plan. I thought that this is where God was moving me in my life. And all of a sudden, I feel so confused. I don't know what to do. You might not know what to do, but if you keep on seeking God, he will give you the instructions for where to go next. He doesn't always have to give you a play by play of what your life is going to look like. You just have to be obedient, serving and keeping your eyes focused on God. Every time you look around, don't look around at what this this other person's doing when they created their business. And the first year in their business, they're making six figures. 
that might not be you. God might intend for you to reach people who are below six figures or in another season of their life because you have to be there so that he can he can get someone's attention. You might be the person who who starts there and then you might not make six figures this year and then next year, next thing you know, you're a multimillionaire just like that because you were obedient to God. God is not always going to get you exactly what it is that you want, but he will give you exactly what it is that you need, what, he, what it is that you desire for your life after seeking him. I'm not saying God is going to, if you have the type of person who will just splurge and just just spend all of your money and you're not a good steward of your finances, God is probably not going to bless you with a million dollars so that you can just squander all of your your fortune you know he wants you to be a good steward of your finances and a good steward of everything that he blesses you with he doesn't want you to just squander it away he doesn't want you to just just so easily just get rid of those things and so what made me think of new year new you is because of the new year's resolutions and because it started making me think of how people say new year new me but it's a new year, but you're the person God has always intended you to be. When you're becoming better, when you're moving towards your purpose, when you are in your purpose, you're exactly where God intended for you to be. There was this pastor that I was listening to yesterday that said something that really stuck with me. He said, we are always guilty or we're always like beating up on ourselves or we we just can't see how things are going to happen in the future because we see our story from the beginning to where we are now. God sees our story from the end to where we are now. So he knows all of the things we can accomplish. He knows all of the things we can be successful in. He knows where our life is headed. And the thing that I think that stops us from being able to grow, to succeed, to move forward is the fact that we're constantly we're constantly thinking about those things we did in the past. We're constantly guilt shaming ourselves. We're constantly just feeling so much and I, I use both of those words together, but we all know that guilt and shame are two separate entities. So they might intertwine, but they're not exactly the same thing. So guilt is something something that you do that you could put, repent for and you try to seek a solution for. Shame is something that you do that you feel, you feel badly about. Like you might do something and like, let's say you took something from somewhere and you do it. And you decide, I'm going to turn it back in you because you feel guilty. When you are shamed, it's when you just have this, this feeling, this feeling of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. You know, that's really how it is. So when I say this guilt and shame or this guilty shame or whatever else, I'm using that because I'm using them interchangeably, but at the same time. <laughs> and so... I just, I really feel like if we take a moment and we look at what our life could be like, like really take a moment and do a, do a, just an, a now analyze your life. I was going to say do an analysis of your life, analyze your life and <laughs> really think about what it is that you really want. What do you want for your life? What do you want your future to look like? If you're single, what do you want your partner to look like? If you're in a relationship, what do you want your healthy relationship to look like with the partner that you're with? What do you want communication to look like? What kind of person do you want to be from this moment going forward or in the future? What could you see as your dream life? What's the things that you want so badly that you just, you can't imagine it because you're thinking about your past. If you could really think about what your future could be like, what would that look like? When you when you wake up in the morning, what would it what would the house what would your bed be like? The covers on your bed, the smell of the room, like would you like for me, this is like something that I do and I don't expect everyone else to do it, but I like the smell of peppermint. And so I do like peppermint oils. So when I am like doing the whole baking powder thing on the bed and baking soda thing on the bed and I'm I'm like vacuuming it and everything else I put a little bit of peppermint oil in it because peppermint is like one of those things that really helps relax me and it, it smells really good in the room too that doesn't hurt <laughs> and so I like to just have peppermint oil in there and I'll put it like in the room so 
if I'm waking up in a place that I feel like is my dream life, it's the life that I desire to have for myself, then I probably would be on a thousand count sheets. No, <laughs> but no, that could be your thing. That could be what you want. Maybe you want to be on the softest sheets. Maybe you want to be in a certain type of bed with Tempur-Pedic or something else or purple foam, whatever underneath. Like maybe you want to be in a queen or a king size bed. Maybe you want to have a certain type of bed, a certain type of room. Maybe the like even just thinking down to the detail of what your room would smell smell like I would want my room to smell like probably peppermint it probably would smell like peppermint oils and and or it would smell like like something that's like eucalyptus or and I probably would do that mixed with something else but I would have something that was like kind of like a calming scent so that when I'm in the room it's really easy for me to relax. It's really easy for me to sleep, you know, things like that. And, you know, I would want to have like the, I would want to have the uh, thing, the not the blinds, but I would want to have the curtains be something that's like floor length, like from the ceiling to the floor. So I want it to go like all the way across and for it to be a lot of natural light within the house, you know, something like that. And I would do that because it helps with electricity. <laughs> Not that I would be concerned about that if I'm making good money, but I also don't want to just splurge on something like I wouldn't want to want that to be the main source of where my money was going just because like if there's a way that I could find an easier, better solution and it works for me because I do like videos like this. I do like different uh, photo I don't want to say photo shoots, but kind of, I do that for like different things with my business and having that natural light makes it so much easier, even with the additional lighting that's going on. So that way it's not so dark within there. And then when it's like spring and summer and fall, you get all that light within the house and it's not like, you know, and if I do like a movie room or something else that could be like in the inner room of the house or downstairs or something. So it doesn't have to be somewhere where it seems like the house is a dungeon. It will look like, you know. But that's just a little little side note of what it would look like for me, kind of. That's not everything, but that's that's probably what the house itself would look like. But not only the house, what would you look like? What would you smell like? What would your, your hair be like? What would your nails look like? What would your skin be like? And if you have like acne or breakouts, you know, you're checking with your dermatologist, you're trying proactive, you're trying... I don't know what other skincare things there are out, out there, but you're trying all of these things and then also looking up natural remedies so that you can get the type of skin that you want. You are like, if you struggle with whitening your teeth, you're looking up solutions to whiten your teeth. Maybe there's like a three-step thing online, a D DIY, or there's like teeth whitening that you can do at your local dentist's office or in the store with Crest Rice White Strips or the, the new snow thing that is out. And... <laughs> You are just imagining what you look like, what you smell like, what you talk like, what you what you're learning, the where you live, what your house looks like, what kind of car you're driving, what you would do day to day. What would when you wake up, what would your schedule look like? What days would you, what would you do on your days off? Would you be traveling? Would you be staying in? Would you be going on many vacations? And then not only that, but then think of if you're single, think of what your future spouse would be like. It doesn't have to be like you imagine this person in a romance novel who's unrealistic. I mean, someone who has the right core values. Like, how would you be treated? Would you be treated with decency and respect or would you be treated like a piece of trash? Like, you know, things like that. Not something like he would look like Idris Elba or I, not. I, that's the first name that pops into my head. And that's what a lot of women say. But they would say something like that, like he would look like that with the same height and, you know, or something like they have like this unrealistic standard of what this guy would be like, when I imagine the guy that I'm with in the future, don't laugh at me. <laughs> but when I like, when I like, in my head, think of what this person looks like, I literally just see like a figure with a question mark. <laughs> I don't know what Heidi is. I don't know what he what I don't know what he looks like. I don't know what his features look like. I don't know nothing. I just know it's like a, a outline figure with a question mark. That's it. And so <laughs> so mine would be like a personality thing. It would be more like core values. And I would imagine like 
you know, this is the things that I would accomplish. So first, you want to imagine all of the things that you're doing. Like, imagine if you were the only person on earth and the only thing that you you got to do was what you could do. You got, like, you were focused on maybe your purpose. You were living in your purpose. God placed all these things on your heart and on you to do in your life. So while you're single, think of your life like that. Think of all the things you want to accomplish in your life. Because if you start thinking about another person, sometimes with single people, I notice is that they will, and I'm a single person too. I'm not like excluding myself because I'm saying this. I'm just saying, I don't think like this, but I have heard a lot of other single people that do this. Whenever you start to think of your life with someone else, or like you, you're constantly always seeking being in a relationship or you're thinking about being so, with someone Sometimes your purpose gets clouded. And so instead of you saying, oh, I'm going to travel three months out of this year just to go and serve at this place or go out on a on, on a, a mission trip or something, you're thinking about, I don't want to go because you might miss out on something. Like, you don't know if you're going to meet the person on your mission trip. I'm just saying. But you and then you feel like you have to wait for that person to do those things and you don't have to wait on anything because you don't know how much time you got here. Like, don't be wasting your life like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we, we really can't pinpoint when, what hour, what day, what, what time is going to be our last time, when, when we're going to take our last breath. Like, why, why wait for somebody else for that? That doesn't make any sense to me because I just feel like life is way too precious and we have too much to do to wait on somebody else, especially when you don't know when it's going to happen. And so I just hope that for you, for me too, because I don't know, like I'm in that weird in between stage, but I can see how women get there because it's kind of daunting and it's a little like, it's a little like, um, I don't know, it, it, it's kind of like a little torturous in a way sometimes because it's like you desire some things that you don't have. And my desire for things isn't, isn't like, I really want to be with somebody. Mine's just like, it would be nice to have someone to go to this one thing. And then after that, I'm not thinking about it anymore. But at that moment, I want that because I want to take someone to the thing that I was going to that would be a specific thing that I would want to bring someone with me, but I don't have to bring someone with me. But that's how like in my mind it plays out. So it'll be something like that. And I'm like, oh, it would be cool to have someone go to this thing with me. But if I can go by myself and it's just like a singles and couples thing, then I'm fine. You know, and even if it's all couples and it's just me, man, I'm glad I'm so saved right now because, <laughs> but yeah, I just can enjoy the quietness and just be calm and enjoy the moment now. Cause you know, I'm all about that God life. And so I would just be, you know, content where I am. And that would be great. And so, <laughs> but yeah, it just, it would be great. But yeah, I have moments like that. Mines are just like, and it's, it's usually not when I see people with people. When I see people with people, I usually just pray, you know, that they respect one another and that they are happy. You know, I really want them to have what God intended for them and, and that everything works out for them. That's what my hope is for people when I see them. The only time that I like feel some type of way by myself is when, no, because even then I can call like one of my family members, which I'm, I know they sometimes get tired of me calling them all the time, but I'm like, look, this is what's going to happen, <laughs> especially in this season of my life. So get used to it. <laughs> but yeah, even then I still don't, I still don't need to have somebody to talk to about that because, you know, I will say it's good to have a guy to talk to once a week or every once in a while once every three months okay I'm gonna stop like changing it but sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have someone who is like a male voice to talk to about certain things but I do have family so even that's not an issue I don't know it's I don't know what what would be the thing that would make me feel like I would need a person for something in my life? Because I do everything on my own already. It would be nice to be with someone if that's what God intends for me to, I mean, since that's what God intends for me to have in my life.
but I honestly can't think of a benefit that would come from that besides the purpose thing. Like, I know like me working with someone else, if we partnered together, it would be like more powerful because it would be two people tag teaming it instead of it just being me, which would be amazing. But other than that, I don't know what the benefit would be. I can't see, I mean, I'm not saying it to discourage people or or like I'm trying to be cynical or anything like that. Like, I think relationships are amazing. You know, I think that's a great thing. And I'm not saying it like in a bad way at all. I'm just saying like, I wouldn't need somebody to talk to. I could go on a trip by myself. I, I like do okay for myself because of God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I, (laughs) I don't know, like, what would I, and then like, due to past experience, you know, I don't want to say past precedent, (laughs) but yeah, due to past precedent, it wouldn't make me feel like, like, if I could feel as confident as I do by myself with someone, I could see it being like, great. You know, that would be a good thing. But I haven't been with one person that I feel more amazing being with them. Like, every person I've been with has made me feel more crappy, That like, since I'm with them. It's like, oh, now I feel like I have to do all of these things perfectly. Or now I feel like, you know, I don't know. It just, it's a whole lot of pressure or, like, nothing's ever good enough. Or, I don't know. Or something is too good. You're, like, too perfect. I don't know, but whatever it is, I'm just saying, like, I don't know how I would feel more confident being with a person unless they truly respected and treated me really well, you know, and I haven't met that person. So I don't know what that looks like at all. So I can't even see that, say that would be an advantage. It would, if that was the case, like if the person was completely comfortable in who they are, if they were a person who, who could really truly honor and respect me as a person then yeah, it could be beneficial. But, and then, you know, it would be nice to like, you know, be one of my love languages for one of those to be given through a person who I was with. That would be nice. But that's it. Like, other than, other than, you know, it being more beneficial for the kingdom, because, you know, God definitely loves marriage and stuff like that. I don't know why I said stuff like that. I'm not downplaying mar- marriage. I'm just saying in general. And, you know, that would be beneficial. The love language thing would be beneficial. And if someone truly honored and respected me as a person, that would be beneficial. But besides that, everything else I can do, you know, or I, I have a person you know, that I can call on for those things. It's not, not that I'm at at lack of anything. So I don't know. Like, I think that's why it's so hard for me to like meet certain people. I mean, not meet people because I meet people every day. You know the story. It's more like a uh, meet the person who would be someone who would convince me that I should be willing to get to know them further or be in a relationship. Like I haven't met a person like that. So I don't know, like, I'm just going to stop talking about it because don't talk about what you don't know about. So (laughs) let me just, (laughs) but yeah, we just are so focused on, (laughs) we are so focused on what we did in the past. We're so focused on the things that we think that we can't do because of who we were when God already forgave us for all of those things. He already knows who we can become. We are the only ones holding ourselves back. Because whenever we doubt ourselves, whenever we talk negatively to ourselves, just like I kind of did with the whole like relationship thing, but I really, I really just, I want to be ready one day. I really, I really would like, I desire to be in a relationship for the right reasons. I just, I feel, I feel like I'm in that place where I always feel like I might be ready and then I'm never ready. Or, (laughs) or something. And I don't know what it is. It's just like, I haven't met anyone that convinced me that being with them would be better than being single. Like, made me feel like, oh, they really do respect me. 
or they really do honor me as a person. Or like, I don't know if I should say honor. That's a little like, a little pressure wise. Like, that's a lot to say about somebody that barely knows me. But I mean, someone who truly respects me as an individual person. That I mean, I, there's there's no one that I met that convinced me that me being with them would be better than me being single at all. Like, I don't feel like I would be appreciated as much as I appreciate myself or loved as much as I love myself or respect it the way that I'm trying to respect myself. And I say trying because sometimes I slip up. I'll be trying to do the right thing. I try to, you know, keep my head held high and do all the right, the things that God intends for me to do. And sometimes I don't always make the best decisions. Sometimes I make mistakes. Sometimes I mess up. And I really, I really don't expect anything from anyone at all. And so when I meet people, I'm trying to like have it where I have a standard, but I just don't have the hope that any person will be any different, if that makes any sense. So like when I meet people, it's just like, I'm not going to say this. This is not real life. Like, this is a side thought that would come in my head, like, in the beginning when I was first, like, I might be ready to, like, meet people. It was like, I gave it a week, you know? It would be like that in my head. And then I'd be like, I can't just speak that on somebody that I barely know because I don't know them like that, you know? And then I also didn't want to be the type of person that tries to meet people or get to know people and I know I'm not ready. And then they just get hurt in the process because I'm not ready. Like, I don't want to be that person that hurts somebody unintentionally at all. And I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, mm, I don't know. I, I just, sometimes I got this little joke that I tell one of my family members, one of my older family members, like we always talk here and there, or we talk every day. I'm going to just be real. And when we're talking to each other, I got, we got this little inside joke and they're like, you know, you will, you'll definitely meet someone, you know, and I'm like, I meet someone every time I leave the house, but I'm not interested in just meeting someone. I'm interested in meeting the person that God has for me. Like, I'm not, whenever I meet someone and it's just like, huh, then I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I just want to stay home. I don't want to go anywhere ever again. <laughs> like, if I have to meet another person like this, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, but it's just life. And I could always just turn it and think of it in a positive way. Like, at least I get to meet a person like this so that when I do meet the right person, I'll know what they look like, you know, instead of it being all the right people. So it's kind of a good thing when you look at it like that. But we have this little inside joke. And so now, <laughs> so I'll say something. They'll be like, yeah, you know, you'll meet someone. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I saw this on Instagram. This is not my quote. This is somebody else's quote that they put or I saw it somewhere. I don't know where it was, but I said, God would have to be like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Nisha. <laughs> this is the guy right here. <laughs> and we just like crack up laughing every time I say that. I said, he would have to be like, like Nisha, <laughs> this is the guy for me to be like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> and then she just goes, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> but we just crack up laughing every time I say it, because I really feel like it would have to be something like, I had to feel God be like, okay, like, for me to feel convinced, like, this might be someone that I could even need to have a conversation with or something. Like, and I give people the benefit of the doubt. I do. I'm, like, nice to everybody. So it's not like I'm just, like, mm, whatever. Like, I don't treat people like that. I just, in my head, like, when I'm, when they're talking to me or something, if we're not, if they're not, they don't believe in God, it's an automatic no right away so that's just not something I'm interested in I'm not interested in somebody who doesn't love God like I do like or doesn't have God in a relationship with God doesn't love God I just that's not for me at all so I could meet the person that day and then it'd be like all right well 
you know, I just don't think that we are, you know, going in the same direction. Like, I think you're a great person. I just don't think that we are going in the same direction or we want, we, you know, are a good fit. And they're just like, okay. Some people are like, oh, you know, like, oh, you know, one guy was like, yeah, you know, if you ever like change your mind or something, just hit me up. And I'm just like, hmm, okay. <laughs> you know, but I don't, I don't ever like get rude or nasty or anything like that because I don't think people deserve to be treated like that, regardless of what they believe in or what they're doing in their life. Like, it's not for me to judge them. It's just for me personally, that's not what I want, you know? So I try to be like real about it without making it into like a, I'm trying to drag somebody along or especially if like I'm feeling a certain type of way or something makes me feel badly that they say or do, I, I really want to communicate about it and tell them how I feel. I don't want to talk to everybody else about it. I want to be like, Hey, you know, when you do this, it makes me feel like this or, or when this happens, I feel like, so that way it's not like I'm just blaming them for something. It's really due to like past trauma and things I've been through. It's not anything to do with them at all. And so I try to like keep it real. And then <laughs> like, <laughs> if they don't want to discuss it at all then it's just like okay you know I I will even then be like hey you know I just don't think you know I really wish you the best I, I hope that everything works out for you I hope that everything's good you know I just don't think I'm the person for you or whatever or I think one time I said you're not the person for me I really should have said I'm not the person for you because you know it, if the person really is interested, I really feel like they have no problem trying to pursue you or whatever else. But I don't know everyone. I don't know how everyone acts or what they want or, or what they do. Like, I don't know nothing. I'm out here in these streets brand new. Like, <laughs> I really don't know anything about any of the dating things or anything. But this is what I do. I try to keep it real with people. I don't want to be that person that just string somebody along or just ghost them I know like all the people in my generation do that but and after me but I don't want to be that type of person I just don't feel like that's godly or fair at all I don't think you making somebody feel a certain type of way or hurting their feelings or just completely disappearing on them is a good thing especially since so many people have broken homes so while you're ghosting this person if they lost their parents if they don't have a mother or a father or they got raised by their grandparents or they were in foster care or something, you ghosting them is a real traumatic event. It's really like emotional, you know, hurt. <laughs> I was going to use a word, but I don't think you could say that on YouTube. So uh, it's emotional hurt when you're doing stuff like that. So it's a trigger and it's a, it's something that is can be traumatic to someone who's went through something like that in the past. So I try to really think about that when I'm talking to people or when I'm getting to know people, I really try to be straight up because I wouldn't want to be the type of person who's talking to somebody thinking that everything's okay. And then all of a sudden they just disappear. Like, I don't think that's fair. I don't, I think that's like a real, mm, I really don't want to say this and drag people like this. And people like feel like I'm being like real harsh on them. But I really think that's like a real coward thing to do. And I'm not just talking about men. I'm talking about women and men. I feel like you part of you being an adult is being able to communicate. And if there's something that you don't like or something that you don't want or whatever else. And I'm not saying for people who have to sneak away from a situation because it's real dangerous. I'm not talking to people like that. I'm talking about real life individuals who are dealing with a regular person like in order for you to be a mature individual, you're going to need to have a conversation. You're going to need to be willing to talk about stuff that's uncomfortable. Not everything is always going to be like roses and unicorns and rainbows and peaches and, you know, all of that other stuff. It's real. Life is real. So if you want to be a, in a, a mature adult, a mature individual, then you need to have those hard conversations because you're not going to be willing, you're not going to be able to grow or learn or become better if you just avoid everything that's difficult because life is about putting in real work and and being mature enough to have difficult conversations there's people who do things to me sometimes and I'll be I'll be getting ready to be upset about it and I will be like hey let me talk to you for a second and I always do this with people because 
I don't feel like me making someone feel a certain type of way in public in front of a bunch of people is nice. And I don't think it's, it's a mature or a good thing to do like at all. So if something bothers me, if something's on my mind, if I feel a certain type of way, I always pull people aside away from like a crowd away from other people. And I ask if I could talk to them like privately, because I don't, I don't, I'm not the type of person who wants to make someone feel this small or like embarrass them or, or like make something everybody's, like everybody's business. It's not everybody's business. It's something that I personally want to talk to with that person. So I, I always pull people aside when I have, like, when I feel a certain type of way about anything, because I don't want the whole, ooh, ah, or, you know, people giving their two cents because it's not about them. And it's not about me like trying to say I'm the biggest, baddest person. It's about me speaking, being mature enough to speak on what it is or how I feel about something or them to be able to express themselves and not feel like they're being judged or attacked, you know? And so like, that's something that I really, I really pride myself on doing because I wouldn't want somebody, like if somebody didn't like something that I did, I wouldn't want to be in front of a crowd of people and for them to say that it's embarrassing, you know? And it's really degrading. I, I feel like that's the, the lowest level of respect you can give someone when you try to put them on the spot in front of a bunch of people. You know, it's a real cowardly move. It's not, it's not good. And it's not a good representation for children. When they see you do stuff like that, then they think that in order for them to solve an issue, they have to do it in front of everybody. That's really embarrassing. And if you want them to respect other people, then you should show them the way that you should treat other people so that they can treat them that way as well. So <laughs> I don't want to be on here forever. And I know I kind of went off and just started talking about random stuff. <laughs> and hopefully it was helpful to other people. I just, this year, for this new year, my hope is that you you are more kind to yourself that you have more difficult difficult conversations and when you're uncomfortable in a situation you voice your opinion in the most respectful way you don't have to be loud or like do the most to say something it's time for us to take responsibility it really is there's stuff that I do and I'm kind of like I don't want to talk about it but I know I need to and so I do most of the time, sometimes I'm like, oh, I could just avoid this one more week. <laughs> but I know that it's necessary in order for me to grow as a person, in order for me to, to acknowledge what's going on in my life, for me to take responsibility, especially if I hurt somebody's feelings. Like when I, if I say something and my friend feels a certain type of way, I make sure that we have a conversation or if I don't like that they said something and it hurt my feelings, I will tell them. I'm not just going to be that friend that's like, oh, you know, she always says this. Like, no, it's no reason for that. Why? Why all of that hostility? For what reason? We're supposed to be working together. The vision is literally the devil. Like, we need to be working together. There's no reason for us to be at odds or at each other's throats over something that we could have a, a conversation about to straighten things out or to like, to just be able to communicate, to resolve the issue, you know? It's really no reason for us to do all of that. And <laughs> so definitely take responsibility for your actions. Take responsibility for your life. Know that you can control what you do in your life, but you can't control what someone else does. After you have a conversation, after you voice your opinion, it's up to the person to act the way that they want to act. Either they're going to respect you or they're not. You can't make somebody like you can't you can't make somebody do something the way that you want them to do it. But what you could do is set boundaries for yourself. You can set standards for yourself and you could be a grown woman, grown man about your business. You know, like you really could just be about that life. If you really want to be mature, if you really want to live like a grown, mature individual who's trying to have emotional intelligence, then you're going to have to do some hard stuff. You can't just have your hand out expecting everything to just come to you. If you want something in life, you have to go for it. You Faith without works is dead. You can't just be sitting around like, God, I'm a Christian. Give me whatever it is I want. No, you got to put forth that effort. You got to really be about that business. You got to be about that work. And I don't mean like hustling and just doing the most. 
and then expecting all of these things because you've done so much, so much, but really nothing. Like, I mean, really working, working inten intentionally in your life, staying focused on God, doing the things that he wants for you to do, not just what you want. And I think I already said in conclusion, but if I didn't, in conclusion, when you are thinking about new year, new you, focus on God, focus on what your future is going to look like, write down all of the things that you want for your life, what your car, your house, your the, the way you'll smell, the type of perfume you're, you'll wear, or you desire to wear the type of car you'll drive, what your day-to-day -day life is going to look like when you wake up, you're going to do all of these things, like you might wake up and brush your teeth, do your skincare regimen, do a couple exercises or exercise, spend some time with God. Well, spend time with God first and then all of those things. And then it might look like you just go and you look out of your window and you see like you got a pond in the backyard or you have like a, a front yard and you just look out at the sun, the sunset, I mean the sunrise or whatever it is. And you just see it there. And you take a moment and you just thank God for everything that you have. And then after you do that, then you might take a shower since you've exer exercised and then get ready for work or whatever. And your day at work might look like blah. And then you're always off Friday, Saturday, Sunday or something. Or you're off Saturday, Sunday. Or you work certain days, certain months of the year and you're off two months during the summer. Or whatever your schedule looks like. Imagine what your day-to-day -day life would look like what your job would entail like what would you do in the morning at your job what kind of things would you want to do with your business what your business would look like the type of people you want to reach how it's going to tie into your purpose what's the thing that you like to do that doesn't feel like it's work but it's something that you're amazing at and how can you turn that into a business really think out step by step like each individual piece that goes into that business and how you can grow it or how it can become more successful and if you're not a, a business person and maybe you want the type of life that looks like blah and maybe you don't want to do a lot of business stuff, what is the business thing going to look like? What is it that you're going to be doing with your business? And those things are what you're going to put together on your plan, on your thing, so that you can figure out what it is that you need to do in life so that you could have the new year and the, the life that God intended for you to have from the beginning, from the time you were born before you were formed in your mother's womb before anything this is what God always saw your life as and now it's time for you to see it